Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace and we'll tell you a little bit more about them further on in the video. We've been using Squarespace for years to showcase our custom PC builds. It is extremely user-friendly if you're looking to build a website for yourself. They have simple design templates which help you create and customize your website with no website building knowledge. Squarespace even works great on mobile. The layout is easy and simple to follow which brings a great viewing experience and it keeps your audience engaged for a lot longer. Online is everything. You can reach a broader audience and a website is one key feature for every successful business. So get your work out there for others to see. If 
you were interested, you could visit squarespace.com forward slash designs by IFR. Try it out for free. And if you are happy, you can save 10% off of your first purchase using code designs by IFR or visit the links in the video description. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video.
What we are about to attempt next is making our own special effects coolant. This will be going in this system. The system's getting taken apart within one week. This is show build fluid. It's not for long-term use. So if any of you guys try this at home, you could also void your water cooling manufacturer warranty. I know EK Waterblock stands by this, so do it at your own risk. So our first test that I want to run on this system is 3D Mark Times by Extreme. Uh, I pulled up this graph off of Hexus.net who actually tested the 6900 XT uh, in 3D Mark Times by Extreme. They got 8,824 and their CPU is the 3950X. Now we're using the 3900 XT so I expect our score to be a lot lower and also they overclocked their system a tiny bit. So. Hopefully, we get around the range of 8,700 points in Time Spy Extreme. So let's go ahead, let's run it, and we'll see what we get. Now, keeping in mind, we haven't overclocked this system. It's all stock. Uh, the only thing we did do is we ran Ryzen Master, and that put about a 100 megahertz boost onto the CPU. So 
It's gonna increase it by a tiny bit, but not too much. Uh, we've got the uh, XMP profile and that all enabled for the RAM. So it's just running at 3200 megahertz. Of course, you can put faster RAM in this system and Ryzen does benefit a lot from faster RAM. All right, what did we get? Let's have a look here. 8689. So it's not too bad. I did say around that uh, 8700 mark, which is pretty good. Um, considering we aren't overclocked or anything, I think it did pretty good. Uh, the 3900 XT, if we boosted that up to a fifth uh, gen Ryzen CPU, that would certainly improve the scores a whole lot. And then imagine you know, adding in that extra RAM, we'd probably get around that 10,000 mark or something, to be honest. Um, but yeah, not a bad score. That's pretty much what we were going for, really. So let's go ahead and we'll test out just regular Time Spy. Let's go, 17,447, not too bad. It's actually better than average and the system isn't really even overclocked. CPU 100 megahertz, but GPU is running stock at the moment. Uh, that's actually really good. Let's actually compare online and see what we're at. Not too bad, not too bad. Premium gaming PC, so that'd be the top end components. Better than 99% of all results. So fairly happy with where we're at. Uh, Definitely, if we got the new CPU in there, maybe some better RAM, this would 100% be up there in that premium gaming PC category. Super stoked with those results. Let's just actually get into some games. So on to Metro Exodus, uh, you can't actually have ray tracing on in 1080p. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an extreme run in 1080p with ray tracing off and we'll see how that goes. And then what we might do is we'll switch it to 4K, do a run with ray tracing and DLSS off, and then we'll do a run with it on, on the high preset, and we'll see how that goes. So let's go ahead, let's run the 1080p extreme run. It is very taxing on the system. So this, this is in no way, shape or form going to be what the system's gonna run in the game itself. This is pushing it to the extreme. Let's go ahead and see how it goes. All right, what's the final score? So the average frame rate was 90 frames per second. The max frame rate, 143, minimum 55. So not a bad result, 90 FPS. Uh, that's 1080p extreme. Let's go ahead and we will check out 4K and we'll go in the high preset. So let's do, yep, 4K. So we've got ray tracing off, DLSS off. Let's do a run. We'll compare this result with ray tracing and DLSS enabled after this. And there we go, so we've got an average frame rate of 59 FPS, just missing that 60 FPS sweet spot. So that is in 4K, uh, pretty much 60 FPS. High preset uh, with tessellation and everything on. Ray tracing off, so if we turn DLSS and ray tracing on, I'm expecting this frame rate to be probably in the 40s to be honest. So let's go ahead and give that a go. Uh, if we turn Ray tracing on ultra, and we'll turn DLSS on, and then we'll hit run. Let's give that a go and we'll see how it performs. So an average frame rate of 33. You don't want to be running Metro Exodus 4K with RT enabled. So let's go ahead, close this, and we'll bring up our next game. Our next game is Grand Theft Auto 5. We've got it in 1080p. Let's go ahead and run the benchmark. So 
So that was a pretty interesting result. We saw around 120, 130 FPS average. Let's go ahead and run 4K and see what we can achieve. All in all, not a bad experience in 4K for GTA 5. We were experiencing around 60 FPS, and then we ended up jumping up to around 70 FPS when we ended up in the main city driving around in the car. So not a bad experience, definitely playable 4K at 60 FPS. So let's go ahead and we'll test out the thermals of the GPU. So to test out the GPU in terms of heat performance, we loaded up Fermark and we've got a one hour stress test running. We've kind of reached that flat line there and it keeps dropping and rising between 71 and 73 degrees, which is pretty incredible for a GPU that's not underwater. Now currently this has been running for about six minutes and it's already reached that flat line. So this is worst case scenario. You'll never see it reach these temperatures in your games. Pretty impressive results. So our final test will be Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We've got a ultra preset. Uh, we actually went to the high preset, which set everything to high, and then we changed the texture quality to ultra. Actually, let's let's just put it on the high preset because then you guys can get the same uh, settings as us. So we'll go the highest preset. Everything's ultra and uh, we have ray trace shadow quality off, so we'll test without ray tracing, and then we'll test with ray tracing. Uh, this is 4K, so let's begin. And there we go, we have an average FPS of 84. So let's go ahead and we will turn ray trace shadow quality onto ultra. And uh, then we'll run the benchmark again and see if we can beat that 60 FPS mark that we're after. Then we have an average frame rate of 46. Now keep in mind, this is 4K ultra quality. If we put that on maybe a high preset, I'm sure we could game at 4K 60 FPS, no issues at all with ray tracing enabled. One final test I really wanted to run in this system is to test out the Sabrent drive that we have. This is a four terabyte Gen 4 drive, something that you don't see really too often. In fact, I can only think of two terabytes being the max storage capacity that I've ever seen apart from this Sabrent drive. So let's go ahead, let's test out a one gigabyte read and write file transfer, and then we'll up the size and we'll see how it performs. Not bad results at all. So I suppose this would be rated at 5,000, 4,000 for the read and write for a four terabyte stick. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and we'll try a bigger file size. Let's try 32 and uh, we'll see how we go. And there we have it. So honestly, not bad scores at all, especially for considering how big the uh, test size is. 32 gigs for these speeds is not too bad, but the most impressive was definitely the one gigabyte test scores where we saw those 5,000 read and 4,000 write. Pretty impressive if you ask me, and I'll leave a link in the description to where you can see these drives if you're interested in purchasing one for yourself. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this PC build video. I really appreciate your guys' support. If you could do one thing for me is if you got anything out of this video, it would help us out so much if you guys could hit that like button. Leave a comment down below and subscribe. Helps us out 
a bunch, a lot more than a lot of you guys actually realize. Now, one thing I did want to mention is with the benchmarks that we did, uh, there is something called Rage Mode, which AMD have just bought out with their new Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. Unfortunately, we didn't have a Ryzen 5000 series CPU to use with the 6900 XT from PowerColor, the Red Devil. So uh, we couldn't use Rage Mode. And Rage Mode's actually meant to use the CPU to help out the GPU's performance. So what you see here is raw numbers without Rage Mode activated. Anyway, guys, if you wanna learn more about any of the parts that we used in this build, I'll leave those in the description. And if you would like to help support the channel, Patreon and YouTube channel membership links are in the video description. It helps us out so much, especially now that we are officially full-time on YouTube this year, so any support is greatly appreciated. Uh, hardware gets very expensive. Uh, we try all we can to get a video out for you guys at least once a week, and we do want to expand, uh, so that help goes a long way. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you all in the next one.